Good morning from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. My name is Elizabeth Dickinson. I'm a reporter on assignment here with the Pulitzer Center. I've been based in the Gulf for the last four years, since 2011, and it's been a fascinating time to be watching this part of the region. While we've seen some of the more dramatic changes in the Middle East happening in places like Egypt, or Tunisia, Syria, Libya, uh, there have been just as many changes here in the Gulf, although they've been less visible, somewhere behind the surface. There's a new generation coming up through the ranks that's changing this region in a very fast and very exciting way. I arrived here in Saudi Arabia at a moment when this is coming to the forefront. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, Saudi Arabia's King Salman appointed a new generation of leaders as Crown Prince and Deputy Crown Prince. For the first time, that means that the future King of Saudi Arabia will be a grandson rather than a son of the founder of the uh, modern kingdom of Saudi Arabia, King Abdulaziz. This is a shift that's been uh, in the works for a long time, and it's very interesting to see how it plays out. Now, Saudi Arabia has a very young population. Uh, I believe almost 75% of the country is under the age of 30. That means that this new generation of leaders, uh, they are respectively um, about 60 and about 30, the Crown Prince and Deputy Crown Prince. Um, this new generation of leaders really has a demographic to represent behind them. And their, the expectations of this younger generation are gigantic. Uh, they have seen so much turmoil and change in the Middle East, and stability is certainly uh, one of the key uh, one of the key pillars of Saudi policy and frankly also of Saudi society. However, at the same time, there are so many changes happening here, whether it's through social media, whether it's through increased uh, tertiary education. Um, young people here are asking more questions, uh, looking for their government to be more service oriented and really pushing the country forward in very interesting ways. I'm also interested in how this new younger generation will change Saudi Arabia's foreign policy. This is again a pivotal moment because earlier this spring, Saudi Arabia spearheaded a coalition of countries to undertake a military operation in Yemen to reinstall uh, the, the government there after a Houthi rebel advanced throughout last fall and early this spring. Uh, Saudi Arabia has, of course, often taken uh, military action throughout the region. It's also a member of the anti-ISIS coalition in Iraq and Syria. However, what's interesting about the Yemen operation is that Saudi is taking the lead. It is not deferring to the United States, although the United States is backing the coalition. It is not waiting for others to come on board. Saudi Arabia is actually taking this uh, initiative on its own. Now, of course, Saudi Arabia has been building up its military for a very long time, uh, particularly through the purchase of U.S. Uh, made military equipment, so you know everything from planes to um, to artillery uh, to frankly training of pilots and the military here, which is a very big um, opportunity uh, for uh, U.S. military contractors and a very long-standing partnership between the two countries. But now this is the really for the first time that that military is acting on its own, its own initiative, and we're seeing now the results of that in Yemen. It's having very interesting. Uh, residual effects throughout the region. We are now seeing uh, many people expecting Saudi Arabia to take a more aggressive foreign policy, not just in Yemen, but elsewhere throughout the region. So the next case that many people are looking at is Syria, where Syria um, has been divided. The rebels fighting President Bashar al-Assad in Syria have been divided for a very long time. Better cooperation between Saudi Arabia and other regional powers and a more aggressive Saudi stance in general is thought to be uh, is thought to be helpful to the opposition in their fight against Assad and against the Islamic State. These are all junctures that are happening right now that are very much in discussion here in Saudi Arabia at this moment. And in the end of the day, it's an optimistic moment. The question is whether the opportunities that are presented by this new generation of leaders will be seized upon and will be used to push the country forward and hopefully to push the region forward as well. Those are the questions I'm hoping to dig into, and I'm grateful to Pulitzer for all its support.